despiertan para verte aquí se queda la clara la entrañable transparencia de tu querida presencia comandante Che Well, it's really good evening, everybody, first of all. Uh, it's really a pleasure for me to be here in uh, Minneapolis again, speaking uh, at a meeting. And I think it's very important, very fitting, that this year, the Hans of Venezuela meeting that we have uh, uh, almost every year, is on the subject of the Cuban uh, Revolution in its uh, 50th uh, anniversary. And uh, we have always thought that the Cuban Revolution and the Venezuelan Revolution are very closely linked. Uh, and you cannot understand one without the other, you cannot understand the other without uh, the one. And I would like to start with something that uh, August said uh, at the end of his uh, very, very good uh, explanation, and that is that uh, the conditions for world revolution, which is, as he said, the, the only real uh, guarantee for the continuation of the Cuban uh, revolution in the, in the medium uh, term, are now uh, more favorable than they have been for a very long uh, time. And uh, this is reflected as well in, an, in something that happened in the last uh, 10 days, which I think is very important, and that is that uh, the Organization of American States passed a resolution cancelling an earlier resolution from 1962 in which uh, Cuba was expelled from uh, that organization, which uh, at that time went un under another name. And this, I think, is something to celebrate, and it is the result of this revolutionary wave, this general shift to the left that we are witnessing in, uh, in uh, Latin America. This resolution was proposed by the ALBA countries, and uh, it was passed at the Organization of American uh, States, and there was nothing that the government of the United States could, could do about it. But I think there was another thing that we also need to celebrate, which is probably even more important than that decision, as important as that is, that is that the, the Cuban uh, government immediately responded by uh, pointing out the importance of such a, a decision as, a, as an expression of the will of the people of Latin America to cancel such a, a ignominious decision that had been taken uh, in 1962, but that uh, they did not want to join the Organization of American uh, States, they had no intention, and that in fact they said the Organization of American States had been a tool of U.S. imperialism organizing uh, all sorts of counter-revolutionary provocations against Cuba and other Latin American uh, countries. Such an organization should not uh, exist at all, that the uh, unity of, uh, of, uh, of the American people should be set on a different uh, basis. I think that's, that's quite important uh, to, to underline at the beginning of this, uh, the beginning of this, uh, of this uh, meeting. And uh, it is, uh, yes, the 50th anniversary of the Cuban uh, Revolution. And when this was uh, celebrated in January this year, there was a big campaign in the mass media in all uh, countries, in Spain, in Britain, I guess it was the same here in the, in the United States, throughout Latin America, uh, in the capitalist media. And the campaign was to say that uh, 50 years uh, later, uh, the Cuban Revolution was not worth it. That the um, historical balance sheet of that revolution was that well, a lot of people uh, died, a lot of people suffered, a lot of effort was put into uh, this process of change, but the Cuban people today are, are no better than they were 50 years ago, there's been no progress in Cuba and so on. This was a very strong campaign, I think it's worth uh, just m maybe even quoting a few uh, facts and figures to demonstrate that this is, uh, this is precisely the opposite of the, of the truth. And uh, I don't want to uh, bore you with too many facts and figures, but uh, there are some that are really, really very significant. Life expectancy, uh, and which show the, the conquests of the Cuban uh, Revolution. The Cuban Revolution was really worth it, and 50 years of uh, resistance have uh, uh, paid off in terms of the living standards of the Cuban uh, uh, people, starting from that point of view. Life expectancy today at birth in, in Cuba, and these facts, uh, these figures I'm using are from 2005, they might have changed uh, a little bit uh, <coughs> to the better in the, in the last two or three years. But in 2005, according to the Human Nations, uh, uh, to the United Nations Human Development uh, Report, life expectancy at birth in Cuba is today 77.7 .7 years. 
he was 62 in 1959. Uh, in the United States, in the same year, he was 77.9. So life expectancy is the same in, in Cuba than it is in the, in the United States today. And it's obviously much uh, higher than it is in, uh, in Haiti, neighboring uh, country in the, in, the, in the Caribbean, to which Cuba should really be uh, compared in terms of, uh, of, of more um, balanced uh, comparison. In, in Haiti, li life expectancy at birth is 59 years of age. So people in Haiti, which is a capitalist uh, country, uh, live well, well ne nearly 20 years less of, uh, because, of, uh, because of capitalism. Uh, the, the, the rate of uh, adult uh, literacy in Cuba is today 99.8%. That is, illiteracy has been eradicated in Cuba, was eradicated, in fact, as one of the first conquests of the revolution immediately after 1959 in a massive literacy uh, campaign. Uh, while in a country like Brazil, which is a capitalist uh, country with, economy, with an economy that is much uh, bigger and stronger than, uh, theoretically than the Cuban uh, one, is, is only 88.6%. Uh, Cuba is in fact the fourth Latin American uh, country with, a, with the highest uh, human uh, development index, uh, according to the United uh, Nations uh, reports. Infant mortality, for instance, and this is according to the CIA World uh, Factbook, which is not, uh, sus <laughs> not, suspici not suspicious of any communist uh, propaganda, is in Cuba for every uh, the, the infant mortality for every 1,000 uh, children born uh, alive. In Cuba is 5.93% today. It's a little bit better uh, now, but this is figure for 2008. Uh, but it was 78 in 1959. It is 5.9 today, it was 78 in 1959. Uh, it's, it's, uh, this figure is, is better than what it is in the United States, the most powerful uh, capitalist country on, on Earth, where, where, where infant mortality is 6.3%. And it's obviously much uh, better than in Brazil, where it's 26. Uh, not, not to speak of Haiti, where the rate is 62, 62 per every per every 1,000 born uh, uh, alive. So we could give many other figures. Uh, for instance, the number of doctors per every thousand inhabitants is 5.9 in uh, in uh, Cuba, while in the United States is 2.3. Uh, not to mention the fact that in Cuba there is uh, free health care for all, something that doesn't exist in the United States, as you, as you obviously know. Uh, there is free education for all, at all levels of uh, the education uh, system. And not only this, for instance, when uh, the Cubans were forced to basically almost close down all the sugar uh, industry because uh, it wasn't worth, uh, because of the world market prices and so on, uh, all the workers that uh, could no longer work in this uh, industry were given uh, full-time higher university positions to be retrained for other jobs. No one was made uh, unemployed. Very different from the United States, where in the current uh, economic uh, recession, mo more than six million people have lost their jobs. They, haven't, they, have, they have nothing now. They have no jobs, no education, no, uh, no uh, unemployment, uh, no decent unemployment uh, coverage benefit or anything like that. So, so I will say, that only from this point of view, from the, of these facts, basic facts and figures, uh, the Cuban Revolution was uh, was uh, was definitely uh, uh, worth it. But if, but you can look at something else. What was Cuba before the revolution? Uh, because this this will give you an idea of what Cuba Cuba will be without uh, the revolution. Cuba was uh, was a, a, a country where one fourth of the population was uh, illiterate, where less than thirty thousand. Uh, landowners controlled 70% of all agricultural uh, land, while uh, millions of people had no land, land and had to work as uh, agricultural uh, laborers, maybe in the sugarcane uh, crop, for maybe four months a year, and were unemployed, uh, living on, on basic uh, survival uh, money for the rest of the, of the year. There was chronic uh, unemployment of 20%. And, uh, and the whole of the most important industries were dominated by the United States. It was a country that was, to all effects, uh, although formally independent, but it was a colony of the United States, could not decide its own uh, future. And these are the conditions that led to the, to, the, to the revolution in 1959, and these are the conditions that were eradicated by the, by the revolution. I would say that one of the first 
most important, uh, in my opinion, uh, lessons from the Cuban Revolution for Latin America is something that uh, August has uh, touched on, and this is the fact that uh, the revolution abolished capitalism in a short space of time, 1959, let's say until 1961, 62, uh, the revolution moved swiftly to implement its program, which was not, in my opinion, could not be described, in my opinion, as a socialist uh, program. It was not explained as uh, such. It was a, an advanced program of, uh, of very important uh, democratic uh, reforms, uh, independence from uh, U.S. Uh, imperialist uh, domination, one. Uh, agrarian reform, which was uh, an important key part of the, of the revolution, which led to splits and divisions in the, in the first uh, government of the, of, the, of the revolution, as the revolution started to implement uh, in a consistent way the agrarian reform, program of uh, free health care for all, free education, a uh, whole number of uh, progressive social measures in relation to workers' uh, rights, in relation to the rent, prices of rent, prices of uh, electricity, prices of telephone tariffs. And as it moved towards implementing this program of national democratic uh, demands, it clashed with the will of the capitalist uh, class and the will of imperialism. And in order to implement consistently this uh, program, he finally had to break with, uh, with uh, capitalism. And in April 61, uh, it declared its socialist uh, character. I think that this is a very important uh, uh, conclusion, a very important lesson from the Cuban uh, revolution, because it can be applied today to any of the revolutionary movements that we see in, in Latin America. We also saw a similar thing in, uh, in Venezuela. Venezuela, the revolution, didn't start declaring itself uh, uh, to have a socialist uh, aim. Uh, it was a revolution similar to the, to the one in, the, in, the, in Cuba, although obviously in different uh, conditions. The two countries are different, and the way the revolutionaries came to power uh, where was also uh, different. But nevertheless, the program of the, of the Venezuelan revolution was, was one of agrarian reform, uh, the cleaning of politics from corruption and so on, independence from United States and imperialist uh, domination, and the use of uh, natural resources of the country for the benefit of the majority of the population in, fo in the form of health care, education, and so on. And when they attempted to implement this uh, program, they were faced by the capitalist class in uh, Venezuela, backed by U.S. Uh, imperialism, which organized a military uprising in April 2002. As a result of this, Later on, in uh, 2005, Chavez said that the only way forward for the, for the Venezuelan revolution was uh, uh, socialism. So there are clear uh, parallels. And this is what is clearly stated in the, in the declaration of uh, Havana, which was passed by a mass demonstration of uh, the Cuban people in, uh, in Havana as a response to the expulsion from the Organization of American States in 1962. And it says very, very clearly that in the current historical conditions of Latin America, the national bourgeoisie cannot lead the anti-feudal and anti-imperialist struggle. I think that conclusion is as relevant today as it was in 1962. The Cuban uh, Revolution, another important uh, point, we don't have time to go into all the details, but in, in uh, resisted, as August has explained very well, the collapse of the Soviet uh, Union. The Cuban Revolution was closely linked to the Soviet uh, Union from many different points of view, but uh, above all from an economic point of view. 80% uh, of its uh, trade relations took place between uh, uh, Cuba and the Eastern uh, uh, Bloc. And these were on very favorable terms for, for Cuba. I, the Soviet Union and the Eastern European countries will buy sugar from uh, Cuba at prices above the price of the world market and will sell Cuba other products, oil, but also other products, at below uh, the prices of the world market. It was a very profitable, uh, very favorable terms of uh, commercial exchange for, from the point of view of Cuba. And when this uh, collapsed, this was a big blow for the Cuban uh, uh, economy. And this came also at the time when it was not only uh, the break of uh, an economic relationship, it was also uh, an ideological blow. Because as we know, 20 years uh, ago, ruling class uh, internationally, the capitalist class, took advantage of the collapse of the Soviet Union to launch an unprecedented ideological campaign to say that socialism had failed, socialism didn't work uh, anymore, and, uh, and the Cuban Revolution survived through, through that, which is a testament to the fact Cuban Revolution was uh, still alive 
uh, at that particular time, and is still alive uh, today as a, as, a, as, a, as a revolution in, in the Soviet Union. It was the leadership of the so-called Communist Party that led the restoration of capitalism. All of these people who organized the restoration of capitalism, Yeltsin, Chernomyrdin, Putin, all, all of them were leading members of the, of the Communist Party of the Soviet uh, Union. There was almost no resistance. In Cuba you saw the opposite uh, uh, process taking place. The leadership of the Cuban Communist uh, Party, the leadership of the Cuban Revolution, took the opposite road. And in extremely difficult conditions, the collapse of the economy of 35%, the destruction of 80% uh, of the foreign export uh, for hard currency earnings, the Cuban uh, Revolution survived through that uh, period. But still, the Cuban Revolution is, uh, ha became isolated, much more isolated than it was uh, before from, a, from an economic point of view. And it had to deal, had to relate uh, with the world market which, uh, which has a crushing domination throughout uh, the world. And, and as August has very correctly pointed out, any relationship with the capitalist uh, market, the, the allowing uh, foreign investment and the controlled uh, conditions, uh, the relationship with the world market creates all sorts of internal contradictions in, in Cuba, which can only be uh, defeated by, uh, by maintaining the ideological struggle within, uh, within uh, Cuba. And it was in 2004, 2003, 2004, that uh, a lifeline for the Cuban Revolution uh, uh, was uh, created or emerged in the form of uh, very, very also favorable terms of uh, commercial exchange with the Venezuelan Revolution, proving the point precisely that uh, revolution internationally is what uh, can really help the revolution in, uh, in Cuba. Uh, Cuba provides uh, medical personnel, which uh, 20,000 Cuban uh, doctors and nurses in, uh, in Venezuela, providing uh, free health care in the poorest areas of, uh, of the country, while at the same time Venezuela provides uh, oil, uh, which is uh, very necessary for the running of the, of the Cuban uh, economy. And this only goes to underline this idea that uh, really uh, the internationalism of the Cuban uh, Revolution is, it's, uh, is one of uh, the main, point, main um, points in order to maintain that uh, revolution uh, alive and, uh, and continuing. However, the, the current situation is not easy, and we should not be under any illusions in relation to this. The Cuban Revolution has resisted for a very long uh, time, but it now faces a particularly difficult uh, conjuncture from an economic uh, point of view. The price of nickel, which is one of its main uh, exports, has collapsed and is about 50% of what it was uh, last year. And this can uh, knock off uh, about $1 billion from income for, from exports uh, for Cuba. That's, uh, that's a large amount of money. Uh, there is also the situation in which uh, Venezuela's uh, price of oil in Venezuela has also collapsed from $140 a barrel to $40 a barrel, making the situation more difficult for the Venezuelan uh, revolution and its relationships with, uh, with Cuba. It has to be said that even in these uh, very difficult conditions, and to this we have to add the two tropical storms that hit the, the Cuban uh, economy very hard last year, three, uh, uh, um, in, in, in Cuba, the, the, the life, uh, the, the, um, the human cost of a tropical storm is very minimized because they have centralized uh, planned the economy and they can uh, use the, the, the economic resources to move people, to put people uh, out of uh, danger and so on, unlike what happens in many other capitalist countries in the Caribbean and unlike what happened here in, uh, in New Orleans uh, a few years ago. But however, the, the economic cost of that, uh, of those storms last year, was particularly severe for, for Cuba. And today, Cuba is fi facing a very difficult economic uh, uh, situation. Uh, and and uh, not only this, I would say there's another factor uh, that is difficult for the, for the Cuban revolution, and that is the factor that Fidel uh, mentioned in 2005. He made a very important speech, one of his last uh, important public speeches in, uh, in uh, November 2005. He addressed this speech to the youth at the Havana University. And he said that the Cuban Revolution was uh, almost, let's say, insulated from uh, overthrow, from military overthrow, from imperialism, that that they could resist. That, that the main danger from the Cuban Revolution was coming from their own mistakes. If they made too many mistakes, 
that will be the source through which the Cuban revolution could be overthrown. And he mentioned mistakes like uh, or the dangers of bureaucratism, the dangers of uh, corruption, the dangers of the new rich, and, and so on. This is an important uh, matter that is being discussed in Cuba uh, today. But these, I will say, are the, the dangerous factors, the, um, the threats to the Cuban uh, revolution. But there are also very positive, uh, optimistic signals for the Cuban uh, revolution. One is that the political uh, debate in Cuba is still taking uh, place. It's a very lively political debate about what is the way uh, forward, the mistakes that were made maybe in the past and so on. Two, that the revolution is advancing throughout uh, Latin America, but also now that uh, capitalism is being questioned internationally because of the current severe crisis of uh, capitalism by millions of, uh, of people. And in these conditions, the Cuban revolution uh, becomes even more a beacon of uh, hope, a place where there is free education, where there is free health care, where there isn't uh, unemployment, where even in the midst of a very difficult economic situation, they choose through a planned economy to maintain the, the gains of the revolution, social spending, education, health care, housing, and, and so on, instead of making the people pay for this uh, uh, crisis. And, uh, and so I think that these are, this is the, these are the positive uh, aspects, the optimistic aspects that we can see in relation to the future of the Cuban, uh, of the Cuban uh, uh, revolution. Uh, in, uh, the Havana at the Havana Book Fair in 2008, there was a big debate about what is called in uh, Cuba the Five Grey Years. This was a period in 1971-76 in which the Cuban uh, Revolution became very closely linked with the Soviet uh, Union, and this had also negative uh, impacts. As I explained, this was a very positive relation from an economic point of view, but from a political point of view it was negative. So five Grey Years, there was a period of uh, censorship of the artists, of the intellectuals, and so on. And there was a debate now at the Havana Book Fair about that uh, situation that took place in the 1970s. And there was one uh, famous Cuban uh, writer, Desiderio Navarro, which said something, who said something that I think is very relevant. He said, we don't want to go back to a situation of socialism without criticism and without collective participation, because that is the shortest and surest way towards the capitalist restoration. He was referring to the experience of the Soviet uh, uh, Union. Uh, but he also said that therefore we are against uh, experiments like the perestroika, which as we know led to the restoration of capitalism in the Soviet Union. And he added, uh, we are also against uh, the Chinese uh, way, which has also led to the restoration of capitalism in, in China. And he advocated for the defense of the Cuban uh, revolution on the basis of uh, critical thinking uh, socialism. And this debate is taking place now in, uh, in uh, Cuba. And I think that the Cuban revolution is strong enough uh, it has enough uh, reserve of mass popular support, it is still alive, very much uh, alive, in order to survive this uh, period. But this is an important question. The extension of the revolution internationally is what can provide the economic conditions that will make the survival of the revolution uh, in Cuba easier, or that can ensure the survival of the revolution in, uh, in Cuba. So I think that we can be optimistic. And I also subscribe uh, fully to what August uh, said at the end of his speech, that is that uh, we say this in relation to Venezuela. The best way to defend the Venezuelan revolution, the best way to defend the Cuban uh, revolution is to prepare the conditions for revolution in our own uh, countries. And this is particularly the case in the United uh, States. Thank you. Primavera para plantar la bandera Con la luz de tu sonrisa Aquí se queda la clave